This video is sponsored by Recoverit. Recover your essential data from any disaster. In modern photography, we get so told that we must avoid mistakes, that we mustn't, you know, we mustn't do this, we mustn't do that. Don't, 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 you know, don't for God's sake make this mistake because that's wrong. You know, we, we don't want that. We need to realize that actually making mistakes is what drives our, our photography forward. Dorothy Lang's migrant mother is one of the most famous photographs in the world. This haunting photograph of a young lady who is looking pensive with children around her at the height of the depression has seared itself into our public consciousness. It is tempting to think that this photograph sprung fully formed. Of course, that's not the case at all. That we can see through the contact sheets, the process that Dorothy through, went through creating these images, the mistakes that she made, if you want to call them that, the, the dead ends, the trying things out that didn't quite work until she honed in on the thing that did work, that nugget of gold wrapped around that sort of almost initially shapeless lump of mud. You may be familiar with the phrase paralysis by analysis, and that's what happens if we become obsessed with the idea of making mistakes, that we never feel we should trip the shutter because we might make a mistake. How's it, how's it? This idea of contact sheets, of seeing the working, the journey of a photographer as they, they skirt around a subject, as they seek out ideas and sometimes go through dead ends, I think is one of the greatest things that has happened to photography, certainly in, in my kind of, you know, sort of 20 or 30 years, is that now there seem to be a proliferation of books like Magnum Contact Sheets, where you can see the working process of great photographers, of seeing what's going on ar around on the edges of these photographs that we are all so familiar with. I thought it would be a fascinating experiment to share with you one of my own photographic journeys from a couple of years ago in Brno, where I was wandering around and trying things out, seeing what was just moving me, and hopefully it will give you inspiration about going on your own journeys of exploration, not sort of physically, but throughout your, your camera, that, that's realizing that sometimes you go down a dead end and sometimes what seems like a blind alley actually ends up being a secret passageway into a hidden garden of delight. These are the sort of photographs that I take when I am out and about, just wandering around, having a holiday with my phone, no real intent to photograph simply just taking pictures of things that happen to catch my eye. Something that out of the corner I go, that's quite interesting, let's see what it looks like when it's photographed. The sequence that I'd like to start with is this one here, which was near a, a football stadium when we were walking along slightly outside of the, the, the sort of the, the city centre. And I was quite taken by these, these shapes here on the ground. I mean, there's nothing in it, it's not an amazing photograph, but it just goes to show, you know, something caught my eye and I was, I was sort of experimenting with it. And because I'd stopped and was looking at this you know, level crossing or pedestrian crossing, I saw this gentleman standing in front of this broken down, what looks like a car dealership or you know, there's a lawnmower there. I don't quite know, I don't speak Czech. And you can see that there was something in there. And I was going like, oh, what is, what is here? That instinctively, I kind of felt that there was something, but this wasn't it, this photograph of this, this man and some of the cars is not really where it was, was happening. But then I look down and I see the cracks on the pavement, the grass coming through. And that's how I started going, oh, I quite like this. I like the juxtaposition of, of the grass forcing its way through the, the concrete and the patterns that the, the, the cracks are making. And then you start looking around. You go, oh, there's, there's more. Look at that, that manhole cover on the road. What an amazing sort of looking feel that you have these these circles and these these graphic elements which I'm very much strongly drawn to and then of course because I'm now feeling in this mood of looking for shapes and graphic forms I turn my attention to the the light you know the lampposts and I, I quite I quite like this photograph it's it's interesting but then <laughs> this is a complete non-starter and you can see you know you sort of see there's obviously dogs had a pee here and you think, well, let's photograph and see what it comes out. And it's just, it, there's nothing here, you know. So immediately you kind of go, well, there's nothing. But again, looking around, you go, okay, well, let's look at something closer that you've now been drawn to. And 
experimenting with things. This is why I say you, I've used the word mistake when I should actually sort of probably have more accurately said experimenting is trying things out, seeing how photographs work, taking photographs without worrying too much about the results. You know, like here, there's two, here's two examples. You know, I photographed the one, this, the building that is peeking over the fence feels like it's a little bit, and it's, it's in the way it's sort of distracting from the composition. So here I'm, you know, trying to, to get rid of it by shifting up the composition a little bit and then, you know, moving on. It's, it wasn't the world's most amazing photograph. So, and, you know, we are on holiday after all, so I'm going to move on and, and take the next thing that interests me. And this happened to be an underpass because we'd noticed a, a run-down football stadium uh, in the sort of middle distance. I thought, well, we'll go and have a look at that. It looks kind of interesting. And, and I quite like the graffiti in the underpass. And again, I've been drawn back to these these cracks. There must be something about this part of Berna that, that made me feel like it was full of, you know, quite run down. And you can see how my, my um, you know, the, the, my focus is a little bit all over the place. And that's kind of, I think, certainly when you're in this mood of taking photographs, is a good thing because you are kind of reacting to the images or the opportunity that is around you. And here we've got a bit closer to the, the football stadium. And again, I'm drawn less to the, the, the overall view of the thing, but more of elements of it, more of the graphic, you know, geometric nature of the building. And here's a good example of me, you know, from an idea previously looking up at the, the, um, the street lights where it's not quite panning out. I can see what I'm trying to do here is to, is to introduce another bit of, interest in the composition by having that um, lamppost from the, the building down the, the bottom left. Here is a photograph that I actually think could have been a lot better if I had just spent a little bit more time on it. And, and this of course is one of the downfalls and I will be the first to admit that this approach of taking photographs where it's very much on the fly and very much moving quickly isn't the best at pulling out all of the options, all of the possibility in the, the, the scene in front of me. And that's probably because I, I am actually, or I was actually on holiday, you know, with my wife. So, you know, she, while she has the patience of a saint when I'm taking photographs, of course, it's, you, you can't just spend hours sitting and looking at a blue and orange underpass and teasing out all of its possibilities. But you could use this exercise as a way of, almost like a recce, like a pre-recce of going to a place that interests you or a city that is new to you and wandering around with your phone, just taking photographs of things that appeal to you, things that catch your, your eye, and then coming back and doing an exercise like this, that you use it as, yeah, like a pre-test, not pre-test, but as something you're just checking out the city, seeing what potential is, and you could revisit that at a later stage. As you may know, I don't really talk about gear here on the channel, but I think in this case, certainly looking at these photographs, it's worth pointing out. The reason that I photograph on my iPhone, certainly with these photographs, is that I find it a lot quicker. I find it a lot more sort of natural for me to use and certainly less invasive for me as a person to have pictures that I take on my phone. A lot of these photographs are from a simply little gut instinct, and it's a lot easier for me to just have my phone and just take a picture rather than putting a DSLR up to my face, which when I do that, makes me think about the scene in a very different way. It slows me down. And, and I prefer to work, certainly in, in this case, of just walking around the streets a lot quicker. It just goes to show that whatever you want to do is entirely up to you, that there is no right, there is no wrong. It's what feels natural to you, what feels comfortable. One of the places we went to when we were in Brno was a house called the Villa Tugendhat. I think my pronunciation of that is correct, which is a, a 1920s, 1930s um, sort of modernist house. And it's a good example of me making mistakes. And again, I've used that word and I'm going to clarify it again, that it is more about experimentation rather than, you know, actual kind of mistakes, like, you know, incorrect exposures or things like that. But it's this willingness to make a mistake in a broader sense that I think we should all be engaging with is seeing something that appeals to us, photographing it, 
and then going, okay, well, can I improve upon that? Or is it a dead end? In some of these photographs, I can see that I kind of went, okay, well, that photograph didn't really go very further than that. I'm drawn to lots of shapes. I was, I was extremely inspired by this, this building. I loved it. And looking around, and this, this set of photographs is a good example of how I kind of find an element, in this case, it's this pole, that I can then begin to work on. And some of the things work and some of them don't. This, this, you know, the footing here doesn't quite work for me. I don't think it doesn't, doesn't really have much of a purpose and, and, and it just feels a little bit, I don't want to say snapshotty, but just it, it feels a bit slapdash. Whereas the other side of the pole, the, the top of the pole going into the roof, for me now feels a little bit more like it's in control. Probably because of the, the, the colouring on here. We got obviously the walls, whereas the, the other image had the floor itself, which is dirty and, and, and browns, where this has got a bit, a bit of a cleaner feel to the photographs. And the same with this one, where these, these images are leaning now more towards less the building as a whole and more the small design elements that are holding my attention. And here I was kind of, you can see if I flip back to this one previously, this is my first photograph and I go, oh, I quite like the way that those, those window panes sort of jam into the concrete here. And I thought, well, let's add a little bit more intrigue. And you see, this doesn't quite have a stronger composition, certainly for me personally, as the previous one did. Again, another good example of me seeing something, I quite like that, that ball light that's hanging outside this door. And this, this image here feels a little bit cluttered, a little bit too full on. So I move around and it's, it's here and, and, and now I've taken more of the, the, the elements out of the composition, made it a little bit tighter, but it's still not quite really doing anything for me. So that's what you know, talking about, like it's a mistake. It wasn't really anything there. It's, it, I've photographed it a couple of times and it's just now there's nothing. You know, photographing what feels interesting is a worthy, worthy pursuit. I love these kind of photographs where they're very simple and, and have almost like a, a somewhat abstract quality to them. When I go out photographing, I don't really think about what specific things I'd like to photograph beyond things that appeal to me, that, that draw my attention in. And you can see throughout all these photographs, there's a, there's a general vibe about the things and they have a, a similar sort of aesthetic. And there are certainly no people. That's one of the, the things that I am not drawn to photographing people, despite the fact that I wanted to be a photojournalist when I was, I was younger. I don't really do street photography in, in so much as, you know, photographing the, the people on the streets. And it just goes to show that the, my interpretation of Berno may be very different to yours. And all of this is absolutely fine. You know, we all find our own interesting ways of things. And one may say, you know, you've missed so much by looking up at the shapes. And I may say, you've missed the shapes by looking at the people. It's, it's a fascinating discussion about how we all interact with things differently and how we are drawn to different things. How do you feel about photographing in public? Let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to hear about what your thoughts are. Do you, do you get nervous at all? I am an absolute sucker for airports. I have to say there's something about airport architecture that I, I absolutely enjoy. And this is us waiting at the airport in Brno to go home. And in these photographs, again, at, at play, you see me responding to something. You see me trying different angles out on things and, and occasionally being laid down blind alleys and, and occasionally finding great photographs that I really enjoy. This, this I thought, was, had the potential for an interesting photograph. I don't feel that it's really successful at the end of the day. It's just it's a kind of a, it's a meh image. Um, but evidently, I, I thought enough to photograph it twice. <laughs> and, and here, I, I, I very much like the, 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 the graphic design of airports. I find it very interesting, especially these, these bright colours against what is often a minimalist colour scheme within the airport itself. I don't know where the, the, the feeling of being drawn towards industrial images really comes from, but it's, it's quite strong within me. And again, you know, here I'm, I'm trying out things. I'm, I'm looking at photographs. I'm, I'm experimenting with the various ideas that are being presented to me. And I would encourage you to do the same thing. This may be not necessarily your sort of 
cup of tea in terms of photography. And you will have noticed throughout all of these images, again, as, I, as I've mentioned earlier in this video, there is a lack of people because I'm not really much of a people photographer. I'm more drawn towards these more stark elements of, of the world that we are surrounded by. This little sequence of images here leads me to one of my favorite photographs and it was gone off to the loo as you can probably gather and I went oh I quite like the look of this you know the, the ceiling and the curve of the door and, and this sign it all came together so this is my initial photograph and then this is me doing a little bit of an, an edit on it and that's me rejigging the composition and I feel this composition doesn't quite work so you can sort of see that you need to sometimes if you've got the time just to Go check out a picture and just give little tweaks. Is the difference now? You may disagree with me. You go maybe this one feels a lot stronger, but for me, this one because of this swathe of, of maroon sort of color, I think gives a lot more impact, gives a lot more sort of presence in the image. Making compositional mistakes, making visual mistakes, making dead ends, exploring routes that never work is always a worthy pursuit because at least it opens up your mind to the opportunities that are there for you you know if you're sitting at the time and at the time I was still smoking so I'd gone outside the building for a smoke and I was looking at this you know the the, the, the curve of the roof and I thought, well there's something something there so you can start photographing things seeing what they come from you and of course as soon as you, you open up your mind you kickstart you start seeing other images this was you know one of the, the lights in the car park when I was looking out across and then you turn around and you go, oh, look, you know, here's, here's another view of the building that you quite like. Now, not a, none of these are particularly amazing photographs, but they just go to show there is a process that sometimes you need to work through these processes. You need to make the mistakes, as it were, to find the gems that are hidden out there. I'm not going to say any of these photographs are gems, but going back to Dorothy Lang's photographs, that she didn't just take the first thing that she felt. She moved on and she, she teased out all the possibilities in there because she wasn't afraid to test things, to, to see what was spitting on her. Having taken all these photographs, it would have been a travesty if I were to lose them, if I'd accidentally deleted them or some other misfortune occurred and they just disappeared off of my hard drive. Would they have been gone forever? Well, no, because Recover It would be able to come to my rescue. Recover It is a fantastic tool for finding these files that have been deleted by accident. Not only will it do photographs, they will also find lost emails. They will find and repair video, audio. If it's one of the 1,000 file formats that they can support, then they can recover it not just on PCs, but over, over 2,000 different types of storage devices. So when you put all of this together, you are safe in the knowledge that your photographs and all those other important files are secure on your PC, that they're not going to be lost to the, to the winds of time forever. To join the over 5 million users of Recoverit, click on the link in the description box below.